This video is going to talk about the zero property to solve equations. So the zero property says that we have a times b is equal to zero. And the only way to multiply and get zero is to something to be zero. So either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So here's an example. x times x plus one. Those are factors and equal to zero. So we set x equals zero, that factor equal to zero, and then the x plus one, we set that factor equal to zero. x equals zero is just zero. But if I subtract one from both sides, I get x equal negative one. And if I check it, you can see that we have, if I put zero in for both those x's, zero times zero plus one, that'd be zero times one, but anything times zero is zero. And if we put negative one in for both those x's, negative one times negative one plus one, well, there's my zero times negative one. So again, I multiply by zero, so it's equal to zero. So let's practice. We have two factors here set equal to zero. So we are ready to set our factors equal to zero. So the first one would be x plus five is equal to zero. And if we continue working, we subtract five from both sides and we find out that x is equal to negative five. That's one of our answers. And then we set two x minus nine equal to zero. So we add nine to both sides. So two x will be equal to our nine and we divide by two and find out that x is equal to nine over two or you might say 4.5. So what happens though if we don't have factors? Well, if we don't have factors, we need to factor because the property said a times b. It didn't say plus. There was no addition or subtraction in there to give me terms. So we need to factor this. So let's use our little x factor. A is one times b, c, which is 54, gives us 54. And the middle term is negative 15. So factors of negative 54 that will add up to negative 15. It's a positive 54. That means both my numbers are going to be negative. And it happens to be negative nine and negative six. So add, multiply to 54 and add to negative 15. So we have our factors of x minus nine and x minus six. Remember we can do that because our a was one. So we can just go right to our factors and that's equal to zero. And now that I have it factored, I'm gonna consider, well, what if x minus nine were zero? Then adding nine to both sides, we find out that x is equal to nine. And then we ask ourselves, what happens if x minus six is equal to zero? Well, let's solve for x. So we add six to both sides and x is equal to positive six. All right, now we have another one to factor. This one has a huge numbers, but I'm looking at that and I can see that it has a greatest common factor of three. That leaves me with y squared, negative four y times three would be negative 12 and negative 32 times three would be negative 96 and that's equal to zero. So I've got my three and it's a y squared now. So I just need to find factors of 32 that are gonna add up to negative four. It's a negative 32 adding up to negative four. So that means I have a negative and a positive. And it would be negative eight and positive four. That gives me negative 32 when I multiply and negative four when I add. So y minus eight, y plus four. And that's equal to zero. Set our factors all equal to zero. Now there's no variable here, so we don't have to worry about the, the three. But when we have a variable, we have to go and find it. So x minus eight is equal to zero. Add eight to both sides. And we find out that y is equal to eight. Then we do the other factor, y plus four equals zero. Subtract the four from both sides. And now we have y equal to negative, that's a negative four. Let's see if I can erase part of that. Make it look a little nicer. Y is equal to negative four. All right, now what's the problem with this one is that we don't have it set equal to zero. It, because now remind, remembering the property again, it was equal to zero. This must be zero before we can factor. So we need to 
take the 7x to the other side. We need to subtract it from the 2x squared. So we have our 2x squared. We need to subtract the 7x from it. And then when we subtract it from itself, we get 0. Now we're ready to factor. So x is the common factor. And that leaves us with 2x minus 7. And that's all still equal to 0. All we did was factor the one side. And if we set our factors equal to 0, when it's just x, we find out that x equals 0. And 2x minus 7 is equal to 0. Add the 7 to both sides. And I'm not going to physically do it this time. But adding 7 to both sides will give us 2x equals 7. And then dividing both sides by 2, x is going to be 7 over 2. So x is either 0 or x is 7 over 2. Now we have two terms on one side and one term on the other. But remember, we would like to keep our y squared or x squared term, whatever it hap the variable happens to be, positive, which means I want to take that 6y, actually that 6y squared, and I want to subtract y from it. And that will be equal to 2. I'm going to move them one at a time. Now I want to subtract the 2 from both sides. So I have 6y squared minus 1y minus 2 equal to 0. And I'm ready to factor. So if I have my x factors here, I have 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. And b is negative 1. And I need to have opposite signs. So I'll put my negative to the left. And I have negative 4, positive 3, because a bigger number needed to be negative to add to negative 1. I have to do four terms because a was greater than 1. So we have 6y squared. And then we have minus 4y and plus 3y. And then we have our last term, which was negative 2. And remember, that's equal to 0. So we factor here. 2y is a common factor. And then we have 3y. That will give me 6y squared minus 2, which will give me the minus 4y. And 3y and negative 2 have nothing in common but a positive 1. And then that just leaves me with 3y minus 2. And it's still equal to 0. But I'm not completely factored yet. So I'm going to come in here and do my greatest common factor, which is 3y minus 2. And then I'm going to have my other factor, which is the 2y and the plus 1 from the outsides of each of those terms. And then it's still equal to 0. But it's now I have factors. And now I'm ready to. I cannot set them equal to 0 until I have factors equal to 0. So 3y minus 2 equals 0. If I add the 2 to both sides, it cancels on the left-hand side and adds 2 to that side on the right-hand side. And if I divide by 3, y is going to be equal to 2 thirds. And if I take my 2y plus 1 equal to 0, if I subtract 1 from both sides, it ends up 2y equal negative 1. Divide by 2, and y is equal to negative 1 half.